you hear and you see cancer in the movies, right? And you see what the movies say cancer is all about. But when it happens to you, it's it's surreal. It, you, you can't wrap your head around what it actually means. I couldn't. I mean, I was devastated. I was, I was living my life. I was 29 years old. How do I have cancer? Six o'clock at night, sure enough, there is a uh, phone call from the doctor. The doctor says, you know, we found a tumor in the colon and we found two tumors or two spots on the, uh, the liver. It was just a feeling of, I don't know, I don't know what it felt like. It felt empty. Terrified, probably. I had a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. Wasn't excited at all about the thought that they might have to grow up without me. I noticed that I couldn't run more than a few blocks without being completely out of breath. And I was just starting to feel all of these symptoms, like I had a really bad cold or the flu. And I finally went to the doctor, and they did a blood test and discovered that I had leukemia. It was devastating news because here I was approaching Christmas and I had two children. And I said, honey, this is it. We've got to make this Christmas great because I don't think I'll be here next year. I remember when I told the kids with Olivia at that age, I used to sit in her bed every night and she said, he's scared. And I answered her honestly and I said, no. She just looked at me and said, I'm too young for you to die. And that was the big fight to make sure that, you know, you, you stay alive for your kids and your family. I think the fear was, it's so unfair to the boys. I think I'm not being the mom I wanted to be. Was I going to be, how sick was I going to be? How, you know, how much was I going to be not be able to do for them? What do you do? It's, just, it's reality. I think you just have to deal with it. It was tough. I mean, I didn't want them to grow up that way. But I have a great husband. I knew they'd be okay. You know, this fear that up to that point, I hadn't lived the fullest life I could. So that I just wanted to do more. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to die. I remember having a conversation with a, a girlfriend of mine at church that, you know, if my passing was to come um, sooner than later, that I wanted her to know that with my, with my daughter especially. I said, you know, there'll, there'll be a day that she'll need to have to talk about what girls need to know. And I said, and I mean, we kind of giggled about it, but I just said, dads can't do that. If I'm not here, you need to be the step-in mom. And so. my, my real goal in prayer was to say, I just want to get them through high school. If I can raise them through high school, that I've done my part. You know, and they can go on and be okay. But I want to see them through all those teenage years and all that growth and character development and, you know, be there for that. So, and I've got to. You know, I remember saying, I just got to live two more years to get her to 11. You know, just praying that if I could get two years in, at least Olivia would, you know, there's a big change between 9 and 11. I mean, I was really willing to try anything. I mean, that's, I was, you know, that's how serious I was. My physician brought to me that there was a vaccine trial that was available. And I said, okay, and I um, did apply for the trial. And I didn't know if it would benefit me or benefit someone else, but I felt like I, it was really my role to give back. If we can just take a chemo or and get to the next year, then there'll be a new thought or a new study or a new drug. Yeah, so put a lot of faith in the fact that there would be something new out there, since obviously the kind of traditional treatments did work for me. And then I did get on one of those studies, you know, that has, has really worked. You know, I think the biggest thing that the clinical trial did for me is allow me to live. If I think back about if I had not been on it, I might have been back on infusions, back on radiation, reoccurrences. So I honestly believe that two-year period where I was taking the clinical trial, you know, that actually cured me. I, I truly believe I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't ended up in Dr. Lynn's clinical trial because the standard treatments weren't working for me. Thank you for helping my mommy to not be sick. There is a cure out there. It's just a matter of uncovering it. It's a matter of, of time, of, of people committing enough effort and time and finding it. You know, a lot of people say, well, are you cured? And 
they'll, you know, the doctors will say, well, you're, you're in remission, and after five years, we can talk about whether or not you're cured. And it's been 10 years now, so I'm cured. And, you know, I feel confident that the leukemia that got me last time isn't coming back. I would ask you to support cancer research so patients like me can not just see kindergarten graduation, but also see college graduation. So people like myself can keep on living and give back to the community ourselves. So people like me can have a life and see their kids grow up. So people like me can 10 years later run half marathons. So patients like me will no longer be patients.